excuse me if I look tired during this video. I totally am. I was up with my sick kids all night and I am exhausted. <laughs> but I still wanted to get this video out. Hi and welcome to my channel, Shades of Sage, where I discuss all things motherhood. My name is Taishima. I am a doula and mom of three and I'm currently expecting my fourth child. So today's video was actually requested. A lot of subscribers have mentioned wanting to know my birth plan. So here is my birth plan for baby number four. I'm going to go over it, all the things I want during my labor and delivery, the things I don't want and things that I hope for of course. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So this is the birth plan that I am using. This is actually the baby center birth plan and they have their own website. They have their own app too. But this is the birth plan that we use for our clients. Now I mentioned I am a doula. So this is the birth plan that I would go over with my client. I also have a doula for my pregnancy as well, which happens to be my mother. She's also a doula and she's an RN nurse. So I feel super comfortable in her hands. She's been there for all of my births and we did this birth plan together. So I'm just gonna read off of here and go through it. It is, um, it's four pages. It would be like two front and back, but four pages and let's get started so of course it has my name on it of course and then the next part of this birth plan or the next section of this birth plan is the attendance so the people that you want at your birth like i mentioned my mom will be there she's my doula and and i can have one other support person now probably be my sister tiana um amenities so i would like to bring my own music of course i bring my cell phone and i do actually plan on this time making a uh labor and delivery playlist so if you have any suggestions gospel music suggestions i would love to hear them i haven't started yet but i have a couple of songs in mind that are actually on my regular apple music that i know that i definitely want on the playlist so if you would like to see that video even if you would like to see what's on my um labor and delivery playlist leave a comment down below and i can do that video also um and another thing for amenities is i would like to take pictures slash video during labor and delivery now i mentioned in another video we can't record the actual delivery process but i can record like the laboring so laboring at home laboring in the hospital room all of that and of course i can record after the birth just for liability reasons the hospital doesn't allow us to which i'm totally okay with that anyway so yeah i would like to be able to take pictures videos you know during the process but not the actual delivery so the next part is hospital admission and procedures so there's a list it's like a list of options and you just select what you want and you know don't select what you don't want so for the first one i want my support people to stay in a room with me at all times so the next one is i only want my doctor so my ob whoever is on call at the time that i actually go into labor to be there um nurse and my support people to be present i don't like i don't like the medical students being present i know they have to get their experience just not with me okay um, the next one, I would like to wear my contact lenses as long as I don't need a C-section. So this one I do have marked on here as, you know, something I would like, but I have not been able to wear contacts, so I probably won't have contacts when I go to the hospital. I'll bring them, but I doubt I'll have them just because I haven't been able to wear them. They haven't been comfortable, and yeah. <laughs> um, but for those who do wear contacts, if you do wear contacts, they will ask you to take them out in the case that you need a c-section so an emergency c-section you will have to take those out before you go in for your c-section the next option is i would like to eat if i wish to now i know certain hospitals certain practices don't allow a woman to eat during labor i'm really not actually sure my hospital stance on that i know i didn't eat for my first one um, but for my second i can't really remember honestly <laughs> for my third i did eat all the way up until transition where um i felt like i was going to throw up so i stopped myself from eating but i was able to eat the whole entire time so yes i would like to eat i know that you know like the first birth i threw up the whole time second birth I may have thrown out once or twice. I really can't remember. That's so bad. But, um, and then for my last birth, I did eat. So, uh, of course, I'm going to eat. If I feel like eating, I'm going to eat. I would like to stay hydrated by drinking clear fluids instead of having an IV. So, I have that checked off. I do, I have had IVs for all of my other births. But this time, I want to try without the IV. But I'm, I'm not opposed to getting the head block, you know, for in case of emergencies. And the last option for this section is I would like to move and walk around as I choose. Um, if you're not on any like heavy duty pain medication or narcotics or epidural, of course, you're free to move around. So that is what I am going to do. It really helped a lot last time just being out of the bed more like I was able to be out of the bed more 
for my last birth because I wasn't on magnesium. For my other two births, I was on magnesium, but you know, still did it. Um, and still was able to move in the bed, but for my last birth, I was able to move out of the bed, which was awesome. So I'm hoping for the same thing this time too. The interventions. So as long as the baby and I are doing fine, I like to be allowed to progress free of stringent time limits and have my labor augmented only if necessary. And I also would like cordless modern turn. I did not have cordless for my other three births. I'm not sure if my hospital had it. This time I'm definitely, definitely, definitely gonna ask for it just because being hooked up to the monitor, I don't mind the continuous feeding monitoring, but I would like it to be cordless. So I will have more space and more room to move around. So that's what I'm hoping for this time. And the time restraints one, I'm, that's not really an issue for me. I haven't had, I've never had a, a, a birth where I felt like rushed or where they, I felt like, you know, they were pressuring me to deliver by a certain time or to be dilated by a certain time. So that's not an issue for me, but that's definitely something that, you know, I still want to be able to voice how long I want to labor, or, you know, that kind of thing like that. I don't want to feel rushed. Okay, so the next part is labor props. I would like the squatting bar if I like to try to again. I had the squatting bar for my last birth, loved it, highly recommend it. Um, and the birth and pull slash tub. I would like to try that, but I don't think my hospital has it. So in that case, then I could use the shower instead. But if your hospital has the birth and pull or the tub, I definitely recommend it. I had a couple of clients that got in there and they loved it. And they said it really helped them with their labor and their contractions. So yes, I would love that, but I don't think my hospital has it. The next one is what kind of equipment I would like to bring with me. I usually don't bring anything just because hospitals are, I don't like to bring to the hospital things that I plan on bringing back home. So I have like a birthing ball here and stuff like that, but I wouldn't take that to the hospital. I would just use their stuff and you know, do it like that. I just feel like it's safer. Um, so pain relief is the next section. So it lists like different techniques of pain relief. So the first one is acupressure. Yes, yes, yes. For my last delivery, we had this nurse come in and I remember I was on hands and knees or I actually was like the bed, the front of the bed was pushed up and I had my arms above it and I was on my knees and the nurse came in and she said, let me show you this pressure point on the foot that you can press on that helps with pain relief. And so she pressed that part on my foot during a contraction and I'm telling you, I had no pain. I know that's crazy, but I had no pain at all. Like I could still feel the pressure, but the pain just went away while that part of my foot was being pressed. And I really need to look it up because I need to make sure <laughs> that my support people remember where it is located, but it was just excellent. And so I had them doing that for the rest of the labor once we found that out, but definitely love acupressure. Bath shower, like I mentioned before, I think our labor rooms just had the showers, but they're nice big ones, you know, with the nice big shower head. So I definitely would like to try that this time. I did not try that last time. And again, that's another reason why I want the cordless monitoring because of course you can't get into the shower if you're hooked up to the cords that are close to the bed so yes i would like to try that this time breathing techniques slash distraction breathing techniques is definitely one of my probably my highest go-to technique when it comes to labor and delivery especially if you're trying to go without an epidural or pain medication it really helps you to stay focused on your contractions and focus on your breath because you need to be breathing obviously and properly for you and for your baby during the whole process so yes um hot and cold therapy i have that one checked off not so crazy about the hot therapy i don't think i've tried that during labor before but of course like a cold rag on your forehead because in my experience it's really hot like the rooms they have the rooms cool when you walk in but once things really start get going it's really hot and you know it's just it's really hot <laughs> so ice anything to cool me down during that process is great and then the other thing that i added on here was hip squeezes so i'm not sure if i did a video on this i think i meant to but i'm not sure but hip squeezes so basically where you gather the hips in your hands and you push in and up slightly um we do that comfort measures especially with the um, partners that are going to be in the labor delivery room because it really helps to take that pressure off of mom's back as baby is descending down the birth canal and it can lead to of course a lot of back pain i personally have not experienced back labor but the hip squeezes still help me a lot and i still really enjoy them during labor and delivery and the last one for this section is Please do not offer me pain medication. I'll request it if I need it. So again, I do not plan on getting an epidural. I've never had an epidural and I don't want an epidural. So that is what I'm shooting for again for this birth. So I don't want it to even be mentioned. If I really, really, really want it at the end or you know, whenever I feel like I really need it, I will request it myself, but I don't want people to mention it.
you know because in the thick of things <laughs> it may seem like it may seem like the best option but for me i like to feel everything i like to be in control of my body and so i don't want an epidural pushing when it's time to push i would like to do so instinctively i don't want to be coached for my second birth, I was coached and, you know, I still was able to push them out. It took about an hour and a half. And, but for my last birth, I was not coached and I just felt like that went a lot better. I was able to listen to my body more and push when I felt the urge to push once I was 10 centimeters dilated. So that's what I want again this time. And again, I would like to be able to progress free of time restraints as long as baby and I are doing fine. So I know some hospitals have like a limit on how long you can push things like that. Um, I never got even to the two hour mark. And if I had to say our hospital is probably like a three hour mark. So after three hours, they probably would wheel you in for a C-section. But yeah, I'm just really hoping that this birth goes even faster than my last birth and I'll be in and out, boom, bam. So the next one is positions for pushing. So I have a couple of these checked off because I would like to try, or at least I think I would like to try some of these positions. So side lying, I would like to try that. I've had clients deliver in that position and they thought it was amazing and it barely had any tearing, if, if no tearing at all. So I would like to try that. Squatting, I did that one last time and because it went so well, I kind of want to do it again, but I also want to try something new. The next one is hands and knees. I definitely want to try that, but for my last labor, hands and knees, that position, my baby's heart rate went down. So, you know, I guess we'll see when we get there. The next one is whatever feels right at the time. Obviously, you know, I'll decide then or standing. Now, <laughs> I really want to give birth standing up. Now, that may be a little tricky, but that's the position I really want to go for this time. So, um, uh, let's see if they can catch this baby. <laughs> next section is the vaginal birth section. So this asks you things you will like during labor. So to view the birth, to touch the baby's head as the crowns for the room to be as quiet as possible. Those things are not really important to me. I don't want the mirror. I don't need to touch the baby's head, no. Um, and I don't need the room to be quiet. For my last birth, we were watching Grown Ups and we were cracking up and laughing the whole entire time. So I don't need it to be quiet. But I would like to give birth without an episiotomy, which a lot of doctors are not doing that anymore anyway. It's not really standard, so thank God for that. I did tear for my last two births, but they say that tearing naturally helps you to heal better than tearing or, you know, having an episiotomy because it's an un unnatural cut. So that's great. After birth, I would like to hold my newborn right away, putting off any procedures that aren't urgent. This is very important to me. My hospital, again, already does a lot of these things but i still had them checked off anyway so we had the golden hour after birth which is where baby is nestled with mom breastfeeding if he or she wants to and all of that kind of thing so they put off anything like weighing the baby you know getting the baby's length doing the footprints and the eye stuff all that stuff they delay that for a while so that's definitely what i want again it's time um to breastfeed as soon as possible obviously uh, my babies are super alert and they get on there right away so hopefully this baby will be the same not to have pitocin after i deliver the placenta unless it's necessary so so pitocin is used during labor to augment contractions to make them stronger to make them closer together to make them more effective i have had pitocin for all of my other births so i'm not really concerned about that and for women who don't have pitocin during their birth they still Give them a little bit of Pitocin after the baby is delivered to help with the delivery of the placenta and to help with postpartum hemorrhage, kind of ward off that kind of thing. And it's called active management. So I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I definitely do want that. But after the birth, I want it to be cut off if I don't need it. The next one is I would like to wait until the umbilical cord stops pulsating before it's clamped. Again, that's something that they already do, I think. And I would like to cut the umbilical cord myself. Or have my family cut it if you know if i'm too out of it but i cut it for my last birth and i just felt like that was a really special moment for me to be the one to cut the umbilical cord so the next section is talking about c-sections now i do not plan on having a c-section but of course with labor you just never know so you want to be prepared as much as possible so for a c-section if i were to have a c-section if i need to have a c-section i would like my support person to be present at all times during the operation i would like the screen lowered a little bit so i could see the baby being delivered i do not think i had this with my first birth because my first birth was a c-section and i was so out of it because i was so sick and i was hooked up to a lot of stuff so I hardly even remember <laughs> my C-section, but yeah, I would like to be able to see, you know, as soon as possible the baby once 
he or she is out. I would like the baby to be given to my support person as soon as he or she is dried, if appropriate. Like if they don't need to go to the NICU or anything, obviously I want the other person to hold the baby while I'm getting, you know, stitched back up and all of that. And I would like to be able to breastfeed my baby in the recovery room. So for my first birth, it was a C-section, but because she was premature and she was really underweight, she went straight to the NICU. Like I got to see her, kiss her, but she went to the NICU and I went to recovery for myself because I still was having complications with my blood pressure. So I was not able to breastfeed right away. That's definitely something that I would like, you know, for this time. Lord willing, nothing else happens like a premature birth or anything like that, and I still be able to do that right away. Cord blood banking is the next section, and I don't plan on banking it or anything like that. But I do want to keep the placenta. So for my last birth, for my last child, I did keep the placenta. I actually still have it in a cooler. For my other two, I did not. And I kind of regret that. I didn't really know about placentas and all that stuff. So I definitely want to keep the placenta this time. And I plan on planting a tree with both of them. An aloe vera tree. So next part is postpartum. So I have all of these <laughs> checked off. So after the delivery, I like all newborn procedures to take place in my presence. And I am a stickler for this. That baby does not leave the room, does not get out of my eyesight. I know some moms send their baby off to the nursery. You know, if your hospital still does have a nursery. Mine doesn't. But yes, I need my baby with me at all times. And the only time that I can't be with the baby is if I have a boy baby and he has to go get circumcised. So that's the only time I can't be physically with the baby. But other than that, nope, baby stays with me. I would like to stay in a private room, which is pretty standard at my hospital, unless it's like really, really crowded. I don't think I've seen them like double book moms in a postpartum room, but I've definitely seen it for like um, moms who are like in triage or they're waiting to go to the labor and birthing suite. I did have that one time, but yes, yeah, private room and I would like to have a cot for my support person, whoever may be staying overnight in the room. And again, that's something that they already have. So I don't have to worry about that. The next session for postpartum is I would like 24 hour rooming in with baby. I just like to keep my eyes on the baby at all times. And they do do a lot of the procedures in the room with the baby. So like the hearing test, the eye test, if lactation comes in, all of that stuff at my hospital is done in the room. So that's really nice. So the next section is feeding issues. I plan to breastfeed exclusively, so no formula, anything like that. I don't want the baby to be offered formula or sugar water or a pacifier. I don't use pacifiers. I'm not a fan of pacifiers. And I won't even bring one to the hospital. So I don't want the baby to have a pacifier. So no pacifiers. Um, circumcision, again, if I have a boy, I want him to be circumcised at the hospital, which in my opinion is easier to do there at the hospital. I know some practices or some hospitals, they wait until the baby goes to the pediatrician and then it's done there. But I'd rather just get it done and out the way while I'm in the hospital. Okay. So the last section is discharge. And I would like to be discharged from the hospital with baby as soon as possible. I do not want to stay extra days. I'm, I'm really nervous actually giving birth in the hospital during COVID times because all my other births was before COVID. So, you know, things weren't as, things weren't as scary, I feel like. And I really, in a perfect world, like if this was like my dream birth plan, I really would like to give birth at home in a birthing pool and have my mom there and my kids there and it just, you know, a nice relaxing atmosphere. I would love that. But I I don't really feel comfortable giving birth at home because I am considered a high risk pregnancy. I do have a history of preeclampsia and high blood pressure and this would be my third VBAC. So it would be, it's still really kind of risky for me to give birth and I feel most comfortable at a hospital, but I would so love a home birth like I'm for home births all the way. I, I totally support them. And I just think that it would be awesome if I could be able to experience that. But I really don't think, unfortunately, in my case, that I, it would be smart or safe for me to do that. But all that being said, I want to be sent home as soon as possible. For my first birth, I stayed in the hospital for seven days because, you know, my blood pressure was going up and it was going down. And it just, it took a long time for me to regain my health after the birth. And for my second, I stayed for five days because, again, I was still having those issues. For my third was perfect. I stayed a day and a half, almost two days, but not even two days because everything just went so well. It went so beautifully, no complications and no problems. 
Um, and so I'm really hoping and praying for the same thing this time. And I also don't want my kids to visit me at the hospital. For my previous births, I had my children come, you know, whoever was born at the time, come and see the baby. But this time I really just don't feel comfortable even having them in a hospital setting. So that's more days that I would be without seeing them also. But I just feel like for their safety and for mine, um, I'd rather them stay home with my family and then come back home safely with baby, Lord willing. Um, and I added two more things to my birth plan. So the first thing I added, so my mom wrote it as no lactation consultation needed. Now, huh, I don't want to say this. Every baby's different, right? Every birth's different and every breastfeeding journey could be different, but I have exclusively breastfed all three of my children for at least that whole first year of life. I went a little bit longer with my first. So I don't really feel like I need the extra support with lactation. Again, my mom is a doula and she's an RN and she breastfed all of us. So I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable about breastfeeding. And if I need the extra help, then I will ask for it. But I don't want them to come in at all. I had a really bad experience with my last birth. And so I had lactation come in. And, and she just really got on my nerves. She really got on my nerves because the baby was breastfeeding well. Like I said in my, one of my other videos, my milk comes in like almost immediately. So I don't have any issues with that. The baby really hardly didn't lose any weight. So I just, I don't know. I was just annoyed. She came in and she was really rough and aggressive with me and the baby. And the only reason I didn't tell this woman off is because she was heavily pregnant at the time. She was like eight seven nine months pregnant or whatever she came in she looked really flustered she was really hot she was sweating and i felt sorry for her in that moment but i really wanted to tell her off but i didn't um and so it was just a bad experience it left a bad taste in my mouth and again i didn't feel like i needed it and i didn't need it so this time i just don't want anyone else in there <laughs> and if i need them if i really really feel like i need them like the baby has a tongue tie or if i'm having problems with latching and all that stuff then i will call for them but i just feel like i have a lot of experience at this point and i've done a lot of research on breastfeeding that i don't need the extra help yeah. And the last one is, I want to be the one to give my baby their first bath. So normally a nurse would do this after they weigh baby and they had that golden hour and all of that. But I want to be the one to do it. I did do it for my last birth and I actually did it on his like second day. So like after the first night and you know, we went to sleep and then the next morning I did it. And it was just such a beautiful experience to be able to bathe my baby for the first time of his life myself and not have someone else do it. So I definitely want to do that this time, you know, bearing any complications or anything like that. Like, like I felt so good after my last birth. It was just incredible. Like I, I felt like I could run a race. Like I felt so good. So, you know, I got some sleep that night, but the next morning I was like, oh, I'm gonna get the baby bath. I'm gonna take a shower. I'm gonna do, you know, all this stuff. So, so yes, yeah, so that all is my birth plan. I don't think I left anything out, but if I did, I'll just add it to the description box or the comment of this video. But if you have any other questions about birth plans or how to do one, how to make one, or, you know, just maybe some of the things that I mentioned here that maybe I didn't elaborate on, definitely leave that down below. I have a birth, I had a birth plan with all three of my births. And of course, again, you know, you can't really predict how labor will turn out, but I just feel like it's best to be prepared. At least in my experience, I love being prepared as much as possible. And so I will have a copy of this birth plan, me and my doula, and then also we give a copy to whoever is the nurse in charge when we when we're admitted to the hospital for the birth. So I'm really looking forward to it. Out of pregnancy, labor and delivery is my favorite part. Like I really don't enjoy the being pregnant part, but I love labor and delivery. It just makes me feel so strong and so powerful and I just love it. I just love it. Um, and that's why I'm a doula. So thank you for watching today's video. Again, if you have any additional questions, leave them down below. And I am working on the other videos that were requested. So stay tuned to this channel. Subscribe if you like my content. Give me a great big thumbs up if you like this video. Share this video with other moms out there. All that good stuff. So remember to let your story be your power. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,